G'day, Professor Joseph Drew. More and more governments at every level are using commercial consultants to sell public policy to you. Now, this could bring some advantages to us, but it also poses a lot of risk to citizens. Indeed, some wonder whether it poses a threat to democracy itself. Look at this report from the AFR, I think it was, $3.8 billion. $3.8 billion has been spent on commercial consultants by the federal government alone. State governments are also spending hundreds and hundreds of millions, if not billions of your money on commercial consultants. Now, the question is, have you voted for representatives to make decisions? Or did you vote for KPMG, Ernst & Young, PricewaterhouseCoopers and the like to make decisions about your life? So it potentially undermines democracy. What is it doing to our public service? Do you believe that our public service should have the skills as independent, fearless and knowledgeable protectors of the public to be writing these reports? Or do you think we should outsource what has traditionally been public service functions to these commercial consultants? A lot of people don't realize that some of these commercial consultants, a quarter, a third of their income is from government contracts. So KPMG, over a quarter of the income, comes from commercial consulting, not from the auditing and the accounting, which most people think that KPMG does. So I'm about to give you five key questions you should be asking your political representatives when they engage a commercial consultant. As I said, sometimes it is legit. Sometimes it is going to add value to you to pay these commercial consultants to give advice to government. But often the commercial consultants about rubber stamping a political policy that the government always intended to implement. And that is just a waste of your money and it's also quite dishonest because what we're, we're doing is using weapons of mass, mass expert, expertization to dupe the public. So these are your five questions. Did the consultant have skills that the government did not? The consulting report's just got some figures that's plucked out of publicly available accounting statements and there's some pretty graphs and maybe a spreadsheet with some simple arithmetic in it. That's not skills that the government doesn't have. That is a complete abuse of the commercial consulting arrangement. If, however, the commercial consultant is doing econometrics and data and development analysis and drawing on a, a good and deep knowledge of the scholarly literature, yes, there's probably skills that the government doesn't have. So yes, they are adding value for you. Question two, does the consultant have knowledge that the government doesn't have? And can they prove they've got that knowledge? Are they referencing scholarly works? Are they setting out theory correctly in plain English? Because if they're not doing that, if they don't have any extra knowledge, why are we engaging that commercial consulting group? There's lots of commercial consultants out there. They'll all run around telling you they're experts. The big commercial consulting companies, you won't even actually know who the person is doing the work. All you will see is the brand of PwC or Ernst & Young or KPMG. It's not good enough for them to tell you they're an expert. They need to be able to prove it and show it. Now, before I go on to give you the next three questions you must ask, I need to pause and ask you for a favour. This YouTube channel is not getting the traction that it needs. These are really important arg arguments and really important ideas that more people in Australia need to hear about. Now, this is a potentially a threat to our democracy, this particular video. You can all help. You can all send a link to one of these YouTube videos to someone else you know. Encourage them to watch it. Encourage them to subscribe. You could send links to these videos to the responsible politicians and encourage them to watch it or maybe even the commercial consultants, so they watch it and learn. It's up to all of us. I can spend my time and my expertise for free, doing this in my own time to help you guys, but I need you to help me to get the message out so we can have a bigger impact, make local government better, 
and make our own lives better. So my last three questions. Question number three. Has the consultant report been released in full? Because if it hasn't, no one should listen to a single word about the report. Now, a lot of people don't know still, and it's, it's an absolute travesty, that these commercial consultant reports often aren't released in full. So the KPMG report, which was the foundation for the amalgamations, has never been released in full publicly. There's some heavily, very heavily redacted copies. And I saw one of them when I was an expert witness in a court case. But the government barrister successfully argued that these reports should not be released into the public sphere. It makes you wonder what's in the report. What don't people want you to know? I would never put any faith in any report unless I had access to the complete report. It's other than that, you have to be asking yourself, what are they hiding? Number four, is the consultant suitably detached? This goes back to Aristotelian rules of evidence. If the consultant has an enduring relationship with the local government or state government or federal government, if they're in receipt of a lot of money, if they're actually sitting in the office of the government, when they're doing this report, like KPMG was, they were sitting in the Department of Premier and Cabinet's office, according to testimony at the Land and Environment's courts. They'd received 400,000. Over the last year, they'd received about, uh, the last couple of years, they received about $130 million off the New South Wales state government. Is that suitably attached? Can they provide fearless and independent evidence if they're beholden to their client, if they're sitting in their client's building, if they're taking money, if they have significant commercial relationships with them. Would it be in their interest to say something that their client didn't want to hear in that situation? As I say, basic rules of evidence that's used in every courtroom around this country. Question five, will the consultant present their work in person to the community. When I do work, I always front up to the public. I stand behind my work. I know my work is world's best practice and I have nothing to hide. I want people to know who authored my work. I put my name all over it and I want people to know me and to know that I am telling them the truth and giving them the best advice I can. Compare that to your typical commercial consultants. I can't find the names of the people who wrote the KPMG report or the names of the people that wrote the secret Deloitte's report. Yes, we still have more secret reports. The Deloitte's reports for the de-amalgamations at Snowy Valley and Kutamundra Gundagai were, again, heavily redacted secret reports and we do not know the names and the qualifications of the people who wrote them. That is a real problem. To the best of my knowledge, KPMG and Deloitte and all the other commercial consulting firms involved in this saga and other sagas didn't give a community presentation, didn't stand there with their report and explain why they were right and be prepared to answer questions from the community. And I would worry about that as a citizen. And indeed, I wrote a paper about this a few years ago. I wanted to call it Weapons of Mass Expertisation. My co-author didn't, so I rolled over because I'm a nice guy. But that's exactly what it is when governments engage commercial consultants for hundreds of thousands of dollars to write them the report to tell them what they want to hear, to simply rubber stamp something they wanted to do anyway, to write a report tailored to order. And a lot of the reports, I'm afraid, are written to order. I've had councils ring me up and say, we want you to write a report for an SRV proposing that it will be 34%. And I say, no, if you want work from me, we start with me thoroughly investigating the situation and making a recommendation to you. You do not tell me what the answer to the question is before I start studying the question. If you want that, go to a commercial consulting firm, not someone like me. But sadly, 
Most people won't do that. They will write the report to order. They will rubber stamp a policy if there's enough money on offer. And when that's happening, your politicians are duping you. They know very well that this isn't independent, rigorous work. They know very well that they have paid to get a story and a brand. And then they appeal to the brand and say, ah, because PwC or KPMG or Ernst & Young or whomever said that it is so, it must be so. We must do that. We must not argue with these big four commercial consulting firms because they know everything. They are beyond mistake or error. Well, no, sorry. Unless you're going to give me the full report so I can find out for myself, unless you're going to give me the names and the qualifications of these so-called experts, unless they have knowledge and skills that the government didn't have, unless they were suitably detached, not sitting in your government offices, not beholden to you to hundreds of millions of dollars, well then I'm just not prepared to accept it. I think you are simply using against me and the public a weapon of mass expertization. Look, thank you very much for your time. Please don't forget to subscribe and send this on to someone else. Thank you. Goodbye.